bonjour, ciao, guten tag, hello. I am Natalie Mack, a retired Navy chaplain spouse, mom of five, home educator, and a lover of food, travel, and languages. One day, as my family was walking into church, we realized that our daughter was struggling to get down out of my arms. She wanted to get to someone else in the church, another lady. And I remember feeling some kind of way, not quite jealousy, but some emotion I couldn't identify with. At that point, I knew I needed to make a change. I did not know what the change needed to be. So a little later, my husband and I had a conversation. We both agreed that we needed to do something differently. We just did not know what. And so we decided that I would just do a little bit more at the private Montessori school that our children were attending. Now, you see, I had already been helping there a lot. But in my mind, I felt as if I volunteered a little bit more, if I participated in more field trips, that that would make a difference, that that feeling I had had would go away. And it did help for a while. But then the feeling persisted. And I realized I really did need to make a change. So it seemed as if homeschoolers were being dropped right out of the sky, right in front of me. And I decided I don't really want to know anything about homeschooling. Why would someone want to homeschool? Didn't we win in that desegregation case, Brown versus Board of Education? Can a parent actually do a good job as a teacher? These were the questions that resonated in my mind. And so I found myself downstairs in our basement office, researching homeschooling. I remember, as I look back, sitting in the same space on our old computer. You know, those were the days of AOL. When you would hear that ringing sound, and it would get connected, and you would think, oh, I'm online. But we had no idea what that really meant. That was me, sitting in that same spot, researching, looking for answers about homeschooling, not quite sure I wanted to know the answers, not quite sure where I was going. So fast forward, I remember thinking, I need to do something differently and what would that be? Now, I, as an African-American girl, was born in Southeast Washington, DC, and raised in the suburbs of Clinton, Maryland. I attended Elizabeth Seton High School and graduated from the number one HBCU, Spelman College, Got a graduate degree from the George Washington University in counseling. I wasn't going to homeschool. <laughs> Surely, God, you were not asking me to do that. Well, obviously, you know the answer because 22 years later, I'm here telling my story. So we arrived at BWI Airport. It was myself, 34 weeks pregnant. It was our three other children, nine, seven, and four, and our beloved Mojave Desert rescue dog, 
fondly known as Jerry Dog. We arrived at the airport amidst security, airport security, dogs. It was just a mess. And you probably are saying, what was going on? It was three weeks after 9-11. And where were we going? We were going to meet up with my husband, who at that point had become a Navy chaplain. Now, we arrived there at Camp Pendleton, and it was a completely new change. We began homeschooling, and we entered into our second military life. Now, he had been in the military right after Morehouse College as a military intelligence army officer, and we had traveled all over the world. God called him to the ministry. He gave up his calling. He gave up his army uh, active duty, and he accepted his calling to the ministry. And while he was in seminary, we were living in Maryland. So we had decided we were entering back into military service. Because you know, the family serves as well. Camp Pendleton was a turning point for me. That was the beginning of our homeschool journey. Three weeks after arriving there, our fourth child was born. 36 weeks, he was early. We had boxes everywhere in the house, and we weren't quite sure what we were doing and why. Life had been a complete change from prior to coming back in to military service to now. My husband deployed not long after that, and all I can say is that I am so thankful for our military community. During times of deployment, we depend upon each other to get through. We got orders to Virginia, and that meant a cross-country move. Well, like a good homeschooler, we decided let's turn all of the field trips that I planned into homeschool learning. And so we decided we would go to the Grand Canyon. We would go to the Hoover Dam. We decided our kids had to see Central High School in Little Rock. You remember Little Rock Nine? And we also decided that we wanted to go to Carlsbad Caverns. Now, as a home educator that I was proud to be, after only about three years of homeschooling, I decided we're going to get every Junior Ranger badge along the way. <laughs> Our kids weren't that happy about that, but I said, yes, let's get it done. And so that's what we did. So we arrived in Virginia, and there was an opportunity for my husband, our oldest daughter, and our youngest daughter to go to Ukraine. So we fundraised and saved money, and off they went. And when they came back, our oldest daughter said, Mommy, I want to learn Russian. Now, as you heard me say Ola at the beginning and mention that I love languages, you didn't hear Russian. So I had been trying to encourage her to learn Spanish or French, something a little bit easier, something that I could help her with. But I realized we're homeschooling, and this is how it's going to look. So I said, let's get it done. And so what did that mean? That meant we would go to the library. We checked out loads and loads of books. We even had a wagon that we really carried each time we went to the library. 
You see, every child had a library card, and then mine. So can you imagine the fines if we didn't return the books on time? And so what did we get there? Lots of books. What kind of books? How to Learn Russian, Russian 101. Because again, I didn't know Russian, but I believed in her ability to learn it. We even eventually purchased Rosetta Stone Russian. And so that began her journey into languages. Where did she get that love of language from? Me. And I was very proud to see that in her. And even though she was going for what is a harder language, I knew she could do it. Years later, in college, she called me and she said, they don't have Russian here. They have Mandarin. I said, well, do they have Spanish? <laughs> and she said, yes, but I don't want to learn Spanish. I said, of course she doesn't. She wants to learn a harder language. And so I said, let's get it done. So she graduated with a minor in Mandarin and has since been to China five times, two of which she was selected to lead a group of DC public school high schoolers there, to Chengdu for the pandas and to Beijing. Our youngest daughter always had a dream since about the age of seven of playing soccer. And we encouraged that dream. The dream developed into, mommy, I want to play D1 soccer in college. And I said, let's get it done. And what did that look like? It looked like years of travel soccer, years of Olympic development program soccer. It looked like years on the soccer field. It looked like mom and dad back and forth to soccer practice. We ended up moving overseas to Naples, Italy. Someone had to go. We volunteered. And over there, the opportunity to play on an Italian soccer team emerged. And she took advantage of that opportunity. Fast forward, she was picked up for an NCAA D1 scholarship to play soccer in college. And I was so proud of her. Our oldest son decided after all of the international travel and years of visiting UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Europe, like Cinque Terre, Stonehenge, so many sites that we were able to go and see, he decided, I want to study international service, Mommy. And I want to go to American University in Washington, D.C., I said, oh, that's where I'm from. Yes, that sounds great. Let's get it done. And there, he not only excelled, but one day he called and said, I need your ancestry account information. I said, why do you need that? Well, I forgot to tell you all, I also have a passion about ancestry research. So I had an ancestry account. I didn't even know he had been paying attention over the years, but he was. And so I gave him the account information and he logged in and lo and behold, he began research, which has made an incredible impact on American University. He discovered the history of enslavement on the campus, which is now known as American University. His exhibit lives on in the Library of American University. Mommy, I was just elected secretariat of our homeschool model United Nations Club. Oh, wow, I said, how awesome. This son also knew the importance of learning about cross-cultural 
learning as well as politics and government. Model United Nations for him was just that opportunity to engage his interest in that as well. And so he began to study it and it resulted in him being elected to the secretariat position. He then said, you know where I wanna go to college? I said, I have no idea. He said, George Mason University. And I said, that would be awesome. Let's get it done. And so he's now a junior in college at George Mason University, considering graduate school. He's a Bonner Scholar, and he's living his best life. Now, you might ask, because I said I'm a mom of five, and you've been counting, I'm sure. So what about the fifth one? Well, his story is still being written. He is 15 and in 10th grade. I can tell you some of his accolades like a good mom. He's a licensed youth soccer referee. He also just was a Google Scholar for 4-H Ignite STEM conference in Washington, D.C. And he has done so much in his years of high school already. Now, I will continue to encourage him, let's get it done. So when I look back over our journey, I realize how thankful I am, how proud I am, and I'm humble as well. You see, I had no idea where I was going, but I knew we had to make a change. And I knew the type of impact I wanted to make on my family. I knew the type of impact I wanted our children to make on the world. And I knew that we were going to get it done. And so as I close, I am so thankful for the journey of homeschooling. It's still unfolding. We still have the youngest to get through. But the impact that we as a family have made in the homeschooling community, in the military homeschooling community, as well as in people around who have been led to homeschool, I'm humbled by that. And I'm thankful for all the years of sacrifice and all the years of joy. And I know that we have traveled down that road less traveled, and it has made all the difference. Thank you.